Hi there, I'm Construction Gamer and this is another UK Mod Showcase for Transport Fever 2. It's been a couple of weeks since I did the last UK Mod Showcase because there wasn't a huge deal going on and I was put a lot of effort into the Derail Valley Overhauled mini-series that I did because I uh, got sent a code by the developers and asked to take a look at it so I did an episode every single day for the Derail Valley Overhauled. So, I'm catching up now on a few mods. A couple of these mods have been available on the workshop for a couple of weeks and some of them are brand new. We're starting with this uh, Peckett locomotive, the 060. There's the OQ and the OX uh, 060 ST. Uh, I'm not sure which one's which, but I've got one on the front, one on the back. Uh, I think the OQ, as far as I can tell, it is available from, 19, from the 1920s. I think that does say that in the description, actually. Uh, but the OX doesn't actually say in the description, but as far as I can tell that was available from the 1950s, used on uh, a couple of collieries, not many, I think there was only three of the of them built, but yeah, they just, this is by Rob Archer by the way, before I forget to say that, it's just a funky li looking little freight locomotive, steam locomotive there, and it's just, it's just quite fun isn't it? I'm not. Uh, I'm not a big, huge steam fan. Many of you will know, but they do. Uh, they look pretty good, actually. Well, pretty good. They look very good. The actual models themselves, as far as steam engines go, and he's even inside there while he's paused all of the uh, controls inside there. They've got the two. You've got the Coleman and the the driver stood there, looking um, looking puzzled. But yeah, I haven't got any passenger carriages, so I've just chucked on some other vanilla ones just to take a look at them. I've got another set by Rob Archer, uh, which is the quite similar, but uh, they are a little bit different because these are, as you can see, they're very the cabs, they're very uh, compressed, very squat looking. This is the Bagnall 040 ST, available from 1937. These were built for Cornwall, I think, for the mines down there, and they were built specifically for for the railways down there with the the limited clearance. You can just see the, the actual difference there. So the problem was they had limited clearance, the gauge clearance, so they had to uh, be slightly modified, and you can really tell that. Let's is the driver. I think I'm just going to pause it a minute and use the camera mod. Let's see, just. Yeah, the driver does have enough headroom just about but it is really quite low that cab um, so let's get that back up and running again uh, there's one of them and then there's one of them and then there's an, a green one slightly different on the back of that and again just a fun looking little steam locomotive we'll head over to the depot and take a look at a better look at them so the steam and then which one comes up first? First is the Bagnall, the Brendan Bay, 41 miles per hour, top speed, power of 408. So it's not going to set any records, but uh, it's still not too bad. I think, what, did I say 1935? So I think for the era, it's pretty, should be, yeah, I mean, that's, I think that usually unlocks around the same time. I can't see though, because of the, uh, I've got the, all available from mod but yeah it's not not too bad forged and eight horsepower is is pretty good i think for that time period and then we've got the packet bonds here the 060 st the oq and the ox and you've got a couple of different uh, colors so you've got a green there and then you've got the freight colored black and red and just a black one there top speed of 50 uh, 408 horsepower again 73 kilonewtons attractive effort and then you've got this one here which doesn't have any more selections slightly less powerful uh, which yeah that's strange I, I thought that was the later one but I'm not entirely sure but yeah I've got uh, 75 ton yeah so that's it's not too bad anyway especially for a little locomotive and if you are re recreating some of the maybe the colliery runs or things like that then they are definitely worth while having now what else have we got we do have quite a bit to look at in this episode actually I think before I get into any of the other locomotives I just want to take a look at these uh, crossings here these UK crossings by model citizen 
Uh, we've got a couple here. We've got one there with give way, and then there's just another one down here. There might be more, and then this is the more modern with the uh, the three lights there. Now, if you click on the actual level crossing itself, you can see is that no, that's not a UK one. Now the problem is I do have the the older level crossing mod installed as well, and it's not letting me scroll further down to see see what else is available. I don't know. I can't seem to find a way. I'm scrolling on this and it's not doing anything. So I'm only seeing the two here, but there might be more available of these. But yeah, just some more UK crossings. Obviously, we do have the the older ones as well. With the usually they have the gates, but for some reason I can't see what's what's passed here. Can I? I don't just. No, can't seem to do anything anyway. Pressing the keys, pressing page up, page down, not not doing anything. So I um, can only see those two as the A4 goes past, which I guess we may as well take a look at as, as it's passing. We've got a couple of cur well, a couple. We've got a trio of cursed liveries. These are fictional ones, of course, but uh, I think it's just a bit of fun on the part of Steve M4, who's been busy recreating the m4s in all of the different liveries so we do have these uh, made up ones which actually it doesn't look too bad i don't think personally yeah it does look a bit bit odd but it does you know it doesn't look too bad the lnr one actually i think actually looks quite nice i think it's just the yellow front maybe looks a little bit odd just going to pause it here just while they're all sat in here but we do have loads of different colors I think it's been completely reworked, all the running gear and everything as well. So we've got a complete set of them. You've got the British Railways green there. You've got the apple. You've got the blue. Another couple of more blues. And then a black wartime. and a f uh, Yeah, I think that's a wartime one. Uh, it does actually come with the, the carriages as well, which do replace, well, overwrites the Silver Jubilee set, apparently. So just something to be aware of these will be available I'm not sure if they're all available from 1935 but that's when the 8th 4 becomes available from 1930, 1935 I'm not sure if these unlock at different time periods like this one I don't think this would be available until then I don't think BR became a thing until like 1950s did it or British Railways rather than British Rail but uh, you're yeah, not entirely sure but it does come with a set of matching carriage as well but for some reason I don't have the Mark II's installed so I've just had to chuck that on the end if we head over to the depot though we can see uh, if we go down to locomotive steam and then we've got that's just the standard in-game one and then you've got the LNER cursed livery so you've got like an intercity one there and an Azuma as well and then the A4 you've got the more classic ones so you've got the A4 apple green blue green uh, garter blue post-war wartime black and then silver jubilee there as well so uh, we've got a whole different variety of A4s and the speeds have been increased as well yeah so on here on the game one the vanilla one it's 90 miles per hour 2700 horsepower uh, the power's the same, but the top speed has been raised to 112 because these were the locomotives, or the, the A4 was the locomotive that set a few steam records in its time. So that's that one. We do have some more reskins as well somewhere. Actually, we'll, we'll use this. This usually helps find what I'm actually looking for. So we've got the 225s again. We've got a load of different liveries for this. These are the 2007 to 2015 transitional liveries. So as the name suggests, they will become available from between 2007 and 2015. Uh, CW315 to the original model and Funk Live as well are named as the creators of these. So we've got, a, we've got the East Coast one when it was uh, nationalized, National Express, and then you've got the Transitional GNER to National Express, and you've got the matching carriages, of course, and then you've got the special 007 Skyfall branded train as well. You can put together, 
and then you've got a Flying Scotsman commemorative uh, DVT on the back. So yeah, that's all looking pretty good. Let's just take a good look at those. Oh, that's the that must be the A4 getting ready. <laughs> that was the whistle of the A4. Well, all of the A4s steaming off. I do have the smoke reduction by a third on, so if you do have the vanilla game, it might look slightly different. But uh, just I think having this the smoke reduction is definitely a lot better. So let's head over to the depot, which is up here somewhere. Check out. I do have, I have every single livery actually subscribed to. So no, it's an electrical multiple unit, isn't it? Uh, and then it's the 40, the class 91. So I've got all of these liveries. So basically this is every single livery. It should be anyway that is available. So we've got the GNR, In-City Swallow, the Flying Scotsman commemorative. Uh, another Flying Scotsman DVT there. So another, that's not the DVT, that's a driving, uh, that's the actual locomotive prime mover. And then you've got the Virgin, you've got the Skyfall, uh, the East Coast of GNER Transitional, uh, Battle of Britain has been uh, available for a while, and the National Express Transitional, mm -hmm. and the East Coast Grey, and the uh, Durham Cathedral, National Express GNER Transitional. Or transition rather than transitional, although that is still accurate. And then you've got the East Coast Grey transition with the Virgin branding there. And then equally with the actual passenger wagons themselves, you've got the matching set. I just scroll right past the Mark IVs, haven't I? It's up here. So yeah, you've got the whole set, so you can create recreate the 007 branded or wrapped consist. And the East Coast liveries, so yeah, there's. I think there must be pretty much every single livery that the 225 has ever worn now available, possibly. And you've got the Grand Central, but that's that's been available for a while, a couple of weeks. So yeah, there we are. Got plenty to uh, plenty to keep you busy there on that one. Uh, there's definitely some the 225s. I'll be definitely putting to some use on the Northern Powerhouse map. And then lastly but not least is the. UK British Railway line side signs by Deadly UK. So we've got. I'm actually going to use this the camera utility for this because if you zoom in, you can actually read the read the text on these just about, uh, which gives instructions. I think these are for train drivers. I'm assuming because uh, there's one about obtain token and permission to proceed, possibly. And then we've got a sign for pantograph down. And then we've got leaves and leaves end, and then we've got some line side boxes as well. These are all in the assets. Assets. So where are they? There. Somewhere. I did have them a minute ago. So actually, they're in track. Yeah, track. So you got. You just select the different ones that you want to put down, like that. And they do. Each one of these does say something different. You can just about read it. There, so that if you're doing a detailed build, then really these are what you want. Combined with the uh, level crossings by Model Citizen, then you've got plenty to do a really quite detailed UK build. And we've got the signal boxes that we've had for a while as well. So I'm actually going to leave you with this one because this is a bit bit of fun, I think. And I'm going to say until next time, bye bye.